So we're gonna look at some big takeaways from this lesson. So I have created a set of polygons. My set of polygons is A, B, C, D, E, and L, M, N, or J, K, L, M, N. So if I'm looking at this, I am looking at how this shape goes onto this shape. So to start out with, I am going to try to make this shape, A, B, C, D, E, move onto J, K, L, M, N, L, M, N. I'm gonna have a hard time with that one. All right, so I have traced my shape here. Let's see if everything's gonna catch up. There we go. I have traced my shape A, B, C, D, E um, onto patty paper. And so I'm going to now see how I can move this shape onto this one. It looks like first I will need to move my shape up one unit. And I say that because it looks like this shape is up one unit higher. So once I've done that, now I can look at these two shapes and I can say, okay, how can I move this shape onto this shape? It looks like they are now mirror images of each other, so that means it's a reflection. I'm going to now trace my shape J, K, L, M, N and see if I can find that line of reflection by folding this in half. Oops, let's do good lines. J, K, L, M, N. N. All right, so I'm now going to fold this shape onto this one. If I do that, and I do it carefully, I can line the two of them up. I've actually lined them up pretty darn good so far. Let's see if I can do it even better. I can line the two of them up pretty well and then find my line of reflection. So now this line right here in the middle that I've just created, a little hard to see, this line in the middle that I've just created would then be my line of reflection, which I can then say is right here. So one way that I can move A, B, C, D, E onto J, K, L, M, N is I can shift it up one unit, so plus one on the y-axis. I'm shifting everything up one unit, and then I'm going to reflect it over this line of reflection. Now, I need to be able to put those into words, and a lot of times I have a lot of people that try to put this into words, but they don't do it very clearly. So I am going to try to write this very clearly for all of us to see, and this is what I'd expect you to be doing. I'm going to say polygon a, B, C, D, E needs to translate, which means I'm sliding it, translate up one unit, then I will reflect it over the line of reflection. So I've already drawn my line of reflection, so I can see that. So what I'm referring to here when I'm saying I'm reflecting it over the line of reflection, I am referring to the line of reflection that I have already labeled and drawn. If that line of reflection is not labeled and drawn, I am talking about something I have no idea about and I would not be able to be very clear about this. Right now, I can be very clear because the line of reflection is labeled and drawn on my sheet. Um, I can also see that I'm moving it up one unit by just showing this little translation vector. I can see that translation vector there, and that really will help with my um, explanation of what I see here. Now, a few things that I can also do is I can make some big statements. I can say angle A, corresponds to various other angles on this other polygon. So angle A corresponds to angle L on my shape over here. Angle B corresponds to angle M. Angle C corresponds to angle N. Angle D corresponds to angle J, angle J. And angle E corresponds to angle K. 
So that means I can now write if I because I've proven congruency because I can shift this up and I can reflect it and the shapes look identical. So because I can prove congruency, I can now write a congruency statement because I know how A, B, C, D, E now corresponds to the different points on this new shape. So what I can say is I can say polygon A, B, C, D, E is congruent to, with that symbol, polygon, and I'm only writing it below because I don't have space, polygon L, M, N, J, K. Now listen to that. That's not, that's not how we do um, the alphabet, but what's important is that we know that when I am making my congruent statements, I'm making it based on the corresponding points, and I have corresponding point A, B, C, D, E, corresponding to L, M, N, J, K. And I have proven that through our congruency. Now what I cannot say is A, B, C, D, E is congruent to J, K, L, M, N, because then you are saying A and J correspond to each other, which they do not. B and K correspond to each other, which they do not. So I can't shift or I can't switch this up and say A, B, C, D, E corresponds to J, K, L, M, N just because I like the alphabet. Okay. What I can say though is A, B, C, D, E corresponds to L, M, N, J, K because that's the way this shape is organized. So my shape over here is organized in a different way than this one is. So keep that in mind when you go and complete um, your work for this lesson. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful in figuring out some of your big takeaways for this lesson. And don't forget to do the must-do practice problems and take the exit pass when you are ready to do that. Thanks for watching. Bye.